Welcome to the CHANGE project for the Ebola virus infection. Within this introduction, we will be discussing resources within the Situation Room along with details of the scenario you've chosen. If you are watching this, then I think I can assume that you've found the presentation board within our Situation Room. You will notice the yellow arrows around the room. Those indicate resources that you have the ability to interact with. Again, exploration is necessary to make the most of this activity. To assist you with the research that may be required to evaluate your problem and find a solution, we have created an extensive list of web resources that will assist you. Explore several of these sites as they all contribute to this problem-based scenario in a different way. If you use any of these resources as part of your research, you will want to keep track of them since you will be expected to cite these just as if you had initiated the research yourself. Another interactive resource within the Situation Room is the whiteboard. We are really excited to tell you about this resource as it is a new feature that we are experimenting with inside the Virtual Teaching Hospital. We see the whiteboard as both a collaborative learning area and a visual mapping tool. You will notice that this tool is available to all of the students within the course, and anything that you place on the whiteboard can and will be seen by your fellow classmates. But look at this as a benefit. You might use it to clarify your understanding of the problem or discuss potential solutions with others that may be working in the same area. Additionally, by mixing the drawing functionality with the text, you have the ability to visually display your thoughts in an effort to organize your research. The floor plan for the unit that you are working on is also available. This may be helpful to see as you are developing your solution. Although it's not included within this screenshot, you will notice blue clouds in the corner of several resources in the room. These allow you to open the document in a separate window. We provided this functionality in case you would like to print the resource or even save it to your computer. The file will open as a PDF document, then just print and save. Now that you have learned the ins and outs of our situation room, let's get to the scenario. You started a new position as the nurse manager of the ICU about eight months ago. It's now Saturday at 7 a.m., and early this morning you received a call that a 53-year-old female patient was admitted to the ICU at 4 a.m. You are concerned because you know that the ICU only has one remaining bed available. Your unit has a circular layout with a total of 10 beds. The rooms include one combination negative positive pressure room, one nursing hub, and one negative pressure room that includes an ante room. We have already completed an assessment and run some initial lab tests. Spend some time studying these symptoms and the test results. I'll give you a moment. You probably also noticed that the patient volunteers at a local homeless shelter and may have had contact with immigrants from Liberia, Africa. The patient was brought from home in the ambulance and placed directly into the negative pressure isolation room. Full protective gear was worn by the ambulance personnel once they realized how sick the patient was. Protective gear was donned outside the home before they cared for the patient. The first responders and ambulance personnel are being quarantined at a designated house for 21 days. The ambulance is currently being disinfected. For the isolation technique, the patient has been placed in strict isolation. Standard, contact, and droplet precautions are carefully being utilized. Full protective clothing, as well as facial, mask respirator are available to the nurse who's caring for the patient. You were initially called in at 3.30, but didn't get to the unit until 4.30. This morning, you've already been hearing about fear of exposure from your staff, as well as other hospital personnel, 
In fact, today you're even short staffed. One RN called in sick and two nurses are refusing to care for this patient. This leaves you with three RNs and one patient care assistant. Short staffing hasn't just become a problem today. It's been an issue for a while now. Registered nurses are tired of working this way and you have noticed a recent decrease in effective team functioning. Two weeks ago, you created a change plan to increase the effectiveness of the team, but it's still a little early to assess its success. The unit staff, medical staff, hospital administration, and of course, the patient are all involved in this issue. As mentioned before, staffing is a chronic problem on this unit. Once the ambulance was dispatched to the home of the patient, she was transferred and admitted to our ICU. Now that the patient's care is in your hands, you should assure that the quality of care, proper training, and effective team functioning are all priorities. Also note, not all personnel have completed their yearly training for isolation procedures. Staff experience is also contributing to this issue. 60% of your RNs are new graduates and have been on the unit for only three months. The RN refusing to care for our patient is pregnant. There is one rather experienced nurse that has been on the unit for four years. You are concerned about your staff's unclear understanding of effective isolation protocol for Ebola, as well as some staff's unavailability for weekend call-ins. Generally, Ebola has caused a national scare. The news media learned of the situation and are actually camped out on the front lawn of the hospital, hoping to get some interviews from individuals involved. Providing effective and safe care to an Ebola patient is a requirement for hospital personnel. To remain compliant, all local, state, regional and national organizations responsible for public health need to be notified. It's certainly worth considering how you might assess the general fear of a possible national epidemic. Also, be prepared to respond to general concerns of possible contamination of family members and personnel who are fearful of getting the disease from the unit staff. I know it was an early morning and we're all a little tired but the ICU is looking for our guidance. You better get to work. Good luck.